Miyazaki just did a bunch of interviews, and we learned a lot of really significant things. For example, see this weapon art? Turns out it's not specific to this weapon. Instead, you can mix and match weapon arts to multiple weapons. See this pot boy? You might be able to capture enemies like this and then summon them as spirit helpers that fight alongside you. Bosses can supposedly be tackled in any order. We now know a lot about which parts of the story were written by George R. R. Martin, and multiplayer is supposed to be more convenient than ever before. Elden Ring news has really only just begun, so please subscribe and keep up with it all. For the purposes of this video though, I've split the information into four categories. Gameplay, the open world, multiplayer, and story. Let's begin with gameplay. So Elden Ring will see the return of the stamina bar, though Miyazaki notes that he feels like it has less influence on the player overall compared to previous games. It sounds like it's going to be closest to Bloodborne though, where stamina can stop you from spamming actions up to a certain point, but still allows for really fast paced gameplay. They've obviously learned a lot from working on Sekiro most recently, and like Sekiro, Elden Ring also has an implementation of stealth. You can crouch to sneak up on enemies, bypass certain areas, or simply assess situations while hiding in long grass. Additionally, when night falls, your stealth is enhanced, but your visibility is decreased, and some scary enemies will only appear at night as well. Elden Ring now also has a jump button, allowing you to avoid sweeping attacks and perform jump attacks that differ based on the weapon you wield. Uh, furthermore, fall damage has been greatly reduced to encourage your vertical exploration. And unlike any game before it, Elden Ring has horseback combat, though Miyazaki stresses that most battles will still be done on foot, except for certain fights where you might need that extra mobility. But the newest and most fascinating addition to Elden Ring's gameplay, in my opinion, are summonable spirits. So, as seen briefly in the trailer, these are enemy-based spirits that fight alongside you, and they fulfill certain roles, like tanking for you, or attacking from range, or assisting you in melee. They're also able to be leveled up, apparently, and maybe even customized. Now they can't be summoned everywhere, but they are something that you're apparently supposed to consider as a part of your build, similar to how you pick up a weapon and upgrade that. And like weapons, who you choose to summon will also come down to personal taste. Miyazaki himself says that players might often enjoy a certain enemy tagging along with them, even if they're not much use in combat. Potboy, I choose you. It's funny, ever since I saw Father Al summon a bird that defends him, I thought this would make a good addition to the game, and it's crazy that it's actually a thing now. In fact, you literally see a character summon a bird here. So spirits having these specific roles and unique animations is so much better than just having a human NPC following you around awkwardly, like in Dark Souls. Overall though, Elden Ring is probably closest to Dark Souls in terms of gameplay and combat. This is what was expected, but what I didn't expect was how deep they're going with build customization, because in addition to magic, weapons, armor, and spirit summons now, you also have skills. So in Dark Souls, every weapon had a different weapon art, special attacks that could be activated with L2. Sekiro also had combat arts, which you could equip to your character and perform by holding L1 and R1. I feel like neither of these things were a huge success gameplay-wise, but now in Elden Ring we have skills, which are kind of a combination of weapon arts and combat arts. So there are around 100 skills in total, apparently, and they can be freely assigned to a large variety of weapons. So you see this jump back slash the character is doing with the curved sword? If you liked the skill, but not the sword, then you could assign this skill to a different weapon. This alone is an insane amount of build variety. PvP players are going to love this, and it's going to help to fill the open world with discoverable abilities. The open world is also filled with crafting materials, which you can search for and use to create the items you need the most. A lot of these, says Miyazaki, will be healing items, which will be necessary, he says, since you might find yourself fighting for a longer time between checkpoints than in previous games. Of course, all this experience you get from fighting can also be used to level up your character. 
So, between skills, spirit summons, weapons, magic, armor, consumables, and crafting materials, you're going to have a ton of tools at your disposal to take on the world. But one thing to consider is that I feel like all of this is going to affect the difficulty of the game, specifically its skill floor. So, something like Sekiro, for example, had a very high skill floor. In order to progress in that game, you literally needed to have the mechanical skill to overcome certain fights. In that game, you can't rely on leveling up your character or using tools that the boss is weak to. Elden Ring, on the other hand, will offer ways in-game to overcome difficulty, it's just like Dark Souls in that regard. This isn't a bad thing, it just means that if you're lacking a bit of the mechanical skill, difficulty can also be overcome with preparation, cooperation, and exploration as well. While exploring the massive world, you'll also have access to a world map, which you can consult to see where you are, you know, where you've been, and where you've yet to go. This map will work in the open world, but apparently not in the smaller spaces of each map. These legacy dungeons are said to be more akin to what we're used to in Dark Souls, and each open world will have its own main dungeon, as well as catacombs, camps, and fortresses interspersed throughout the open world. There are six open worlds that we'll be exploring and each is going to be the domain of demigod characters that we'll discuss in a different video. Altogether though, these areas are called the Lands Between, and they're arranged in such a way that there is a logical progression to these open worlds, although you don't have to follow it. In fact, apparently you can skip more than half the game's bosses if you want to. In that sense, the game sounds a lot more like Breath of the Wild, where the main path is quite clear, but side paths are tempting to explore. And according to Miyazaki, none of these side paths or side quests will appear on your map. Instead, it's up to the player to mark these things themselves manually, which I feel like is fantastic for immersion. A little later in the game, the player will be able to access a hub area where you can branch out into the six main areas of the lands between. On top of this, fast travel is also present, though from software say that they encourage users to enjoy the exploration and uncover the map for themselves. Like in all open world games, and like in Dark Souls as well, the more you discover, the more powerful your character becomes, and I'm sure that the difficulty of a From Software game will be a really good motivator for exploring the world, and not just fast traveling everywhere. This was a problem I noticed in Ghost of Tsushima. At some point, I became so powerful that I didn't really need to explore the game anymore, so I think that the skill of From Software in designing difficult areas will really help to motivate you to explore a bit more. But From Software says that another motivator for exploring is going to be meeting NPCs around the world, who are said to add drama to the journey, they add twists to the narrative, and they also influence the endings. According to Miyazaki, the NPCs you meet will have a really big impact on the way you view the world and the story, because they'll reveal how they see the world, and he even calls them protagonists, and says that they're an extremely important part of Elden Ring, which, you know, is certainly more than he's said about NPCs in past games. For all these NPCs, however, there will be no bustling towns or villages in Elden Ring compared to something like Breath of the Wild. This isn't their specialty, he says, so they've chosen to focus on other things, like dungeons and level design and also character customization. The usual, you know, fragmentary story presentation methods through item descriptions and dialogue are said to be expected, though the team also says that they're leveraging what they learned from Sekiro and think they'll be better able to present the surface plot through dialogue and cutscenes. But what is really said to be different this time is how the story of this game came to be written. In the past, Miyazaki says that he would set a game system and then write a story that matches that, but this time he says it was kind of the opposite. George Martin wrote the foundations of the story. He came up with the mythos of the world, including the Tarnished and the Six Demigods, and then the team applied gameplay systems to suit that story. From Software said that they expected to have to leave out parts of the mythos to suit the game systems, but that luckily it ended up not being like that, and that their collaboration was a very fruitful one. 
Speaking of collaboration, the developers are aiming to make it easier to co-op. Firstly, you previously needed items like humanity or embers in order to participate in online play, but now this requirement has been either reduced or removed. Secondly, because the world is so vast now, special locations now exist where players can leave their signs and see who is currently available. Lastly, once you're sharing a world with someone, it seems like interface elements will be added to provide more information about other players in the world. And to enhance the connections that you have to those around you, something called groups are being added to the game. So once you join a group, you'll be able to single out the phantoms, the bloodstains, and the messages from other people in your group to connect on a more relatable level. Uh, for example, I'll probably be able to set the password potboy, and you guys will be able to see and connect with other people who have chosen the superior spirit companion. On top of this, the game will also have covenants, which are said to add flavor to the multiplayer, you know, something like the Aldrich Faithful from Dark Souls 3, for example, where you roleplay as a defender of Aldrich, this kind of thing is back in the game. And PvP is also, of course, confirmed. It's even possible in these massive open fields, which is a nice surprise. That said though, Miyazaki said that you can't use your horse in the open field in PvP, which kind of confuses me because I can see how PvP might be awkward on horseback, but I don't understand how they're going to disable you from getting on your horse. It just seems so necessary for the open world. And keep an eye out for a story video, which I think I'm going to work on next, because there's a lot of information on the story that I haven't covered, particularly on the official websites, and also about all the contextualization we can give to the first trailer that was released, so keep an eye out for that video, and I'll see you guys next time. So much fun covering all this stuff. So thank you for being here.